Good morning, everybody. Don't mind this. If you make eye contact with it, it gets worse. It just, we just leave it. We don't, we don't discuss it. My girls are trying to figure out their way in the world. Anyway, we're going to mordant a whole bunch of silk this morning because more silk came and we're going to mordant it, mordant it in alum. And then we're also going to mordant some in alum triformate because I want to see if it will still do the print if I alum triformate it and then iron dip it, or is it 100% reliant upon that basic alum, or can any alum be used for that as long as it's a protein fiber? Other than the alum acetate, which was meant for cotton, which, pfft, no, never again. I will not be duped. Anyway, I'm going to get to mordanting, and we will have lots of experiments from this, but hopefully we will be recreating our cochineal dye blankets. And I was thinking that since it's protein fiber, why couldn't I make a Saxon blue dye blanket? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a Saxon blue dye blanket, friends. And then we could dip them like crisscross when they're done and see if they change colors. There's so many options. Anyway, so let's try some of that and I will see you in the next portion of this experiment. Okay, I just wanted to show you the cotton batting that I'm using. This is just straight up 100% cotton. Uh, I think it's like, it's technically like it's wool felted. It's needle felted, but it's cotton. Uh, so it won't stick together super well if you go yank it around on it, but it will carry a bunch of dye. You can also use just uh, regular fabric. We've seen that work before and double it up to make it even more dark. But I wanted to see if having a really weighty carrier would help. We don't mordant this because we want the dye to fall out of it as a dye blanket. So if we put cochineal in this, it still will dye it pink because cochineal doesn't necessarily need a mordant. Uh, but the Saxon blue, if we do dye blankets with that, it should not adhere to this at all. It is, it will not work on any mordant, on any, any cellulose fiber. It's just not meant for that. It won't do it. Don't ask it to. That's not what it's for. So it should fall right out of this and into whatever silk we put it on. So I'm very excited to try some dye blankets, but you do have to pre-soak this. So cut it into a bunch of random sizes that you don't feel bad cutting up again later if you want to do dye blankets. Uh, and then pre-soak it and just make sure it's wet before you squeeze it out. Put it in your dye bath, whatever you're trying to pick up dye with. You don't have to do that for a long time. It's going to soak it up if you've got this pre-soaked. So just put it in there for as long as it takes you to get everything else ready. But just wanted to show you that this is like the, the thickness and fluffiness of the batting that I'm using if you were going to try to exactly recreate what I'm doing. But we've seen it work with much crappier fabric and... Uh, much less effort. So <laughs> this is only if you would like to do this, but pre-wet it before you do anything else. So that's what I'm doing with this to prepare us for later. Okay, so for our dye blankets that we're gonna do in cochineal, I've pre-soaked them. They are unmordanted, it's just cotton. It will still dye the cotton, but I'm gonna put it in after I dye a bunch of stuff and kind of exhaust the bath a little bit. And it, they, those can just soak that up until I'm ready to steam them into something else. But uh, that's where that's going to be. And we will soak our dye blankets in it. And I will update you when we do. Okay, so now that I'm done dyeing this, I've got my cotton dye blankets. One used to be an iron dye blanket. We're just going to reuse it anyway. Uh, theoretically, it should mix up, miss, uh, rinse out and it shouldn't ruin the dye bath. But we're done with our dye experiment, so even if it does, that's okay. Uh, but we'll make some dye blankets for this and uh, see how those turn out later. Okay, so here's our first cochineal dye blanket experiment. This looks so much like a rosy maple moth when I dyed it last time. I thought it would be fun to try and make the leaves look like they were in the shape of little rosy maple moths. So there's kind of a hint of rosy maple moth. I'm going to get the uh, cochineal soaked cotton on top and then fresh plastic and then roll it up so we can steam it. Okay, here is cochineal blanket number two. So we're going to do this one with another cochineal blanket and then one more after it, but it's on the silk uh, noir fabric. 
And that is because I want to see if it prints the same onto Charmeuse as it did the other one. One. Two, uh, I want to see if it looks better with a different dye blanket on the other one. And three, I want to have enough samples that I could potentially over dye these in another experiment. So we're making a few samples so that we have options for later. I'm going to steam them for an hour. Cochineal dye blanket babies are in. And we shall see how they do. And then if this works, we will escalate things to a Saxon blue dye blanket. But only after this works. This might just blow out the whole thing. Who knows? Okay, uh, one hour. Well, okay. It's been an hour. And as you can see, I got some new plastic. It's just painter's drop plastic, but it's like seven mil in thickness so that it won't just fuse to itself, hopefully. Uh, it didn't say anything about using it for eco dyeing on the plastic label, but seems to have survived. So we'll let these cool a little bit so that we don't uh, give ourselves steam scalds like last time. I did this and I got overexcited and wanted to unwrap them too soon. So we will give them a minute to cool. Well, hello again. We have our three uh, cochineal dye blankets babies here. They're still warm. I'm sure I will lightly steam myself. But let's uh, unroll one. I think these are the two matching ones and I think this is the silk noir. So I'll do this one first and I will do the speed unrolls for you so you don't have to listen to me the whole time. Well, I'd say that's a good dupe. We did it. And I do think that the good dye blanket helped. But you can see where I had to split it because I didn't plan on doing this one this wide. You can see where it overlapped. It is imperative to get perfectly even if you want a perfect dye blanket. Look how fun. Oh, I love these. Okay, uh, I'm going to fold this up and unwrap one of our scarves. Ugh, but just look how fun. It's even printing it. E, so cool. Okay, I'm gonna start up another one. We did it. And look, it's real prints. It's so beautiful. 
and our dye blanket worked. And weirdly, I think a little bit of iron came off on it. So I do think that we could maybe satin or iron blanket over the top of these because I think a tiny bit of remnant iron came out of that dye blanket. Alrighty, well, let's do our last cochineal uh, bundle blanket dye and then we will wash everybody and check out how we did. I think there's a little hint of rosy maple moth shape in there. That one's pretty good. That one's pretty mothy. He's got little antennas. Look! We totally recreated our dye blanket and we made it look vaguely of a moth. What a triumph! All right, off to be laundered and we will wrap up the cochineal dye blanket experiment and since it worked, we shall feel brave enough to do the uh, Saxon blue, but maybe tomorrow because I'm kind of tired. Okay, I will see you when these are laundered. Well, okay, here's our beautiful cochineal over dye blanket experiment. I believe this is a Chinese fire tree. I could be mistaken. Now, what I have noticed is, is that sometimes on the side that I start rolling on, there's a little less color. What I think is happening is, I think that that part is under more pressure as I roll it. Sorry, these are going to pull themselves right off the table, but you can get a view of some of the other portions. Uh, when I'm pressing the dye blanket in and rolling it, I think that it is pressing it out of the early part because it's rolling that part tighter and it's under less and less tension as it gets further out. Let me see if I can grab one and not flip the entire thing off the table. Oh God, it's going to flip. Okay, I'm holding it up with my leg. But you can see that this goes to this scarf. And the color is just a little more rich and even towards the other end as opposed to the starting end. So I think that is just because the dye blanket gets smooshed and it probably pushes some of the liquid out of the way and makes less perfect of a print. So that could probably be managed by using like a tighter weave of uh, batting. And this is the beautiful silk noir, which I think actually makes sharper prints. I don't know if it's better or worse, but it's sharper. And I just think it is gorgeous. So we are gonna save one of these and half of this to dry for some over dyeing experiments and see what happens if you over dye on top of leaf prints. But I'm so happy with how these came out. And I actually think it came out pretty cute to try to make these look like little rosy maple moths with like the body and then his little wingies. I was amused by it. Otherwise, we did a great job and it was a very successful cochineal experiment. If you haven't considered it, please check the links below for my Patreon. My Patreon is what keeps me alive and keeps me making our super fun experiment videos. So if you would like to see more, 
please check out my Patreon, like, subscribe, let me know what your favorite was, and I will see you for more dye blankets tomorrow. Bye!